Alright, so in this video we want to cover being able to use Blender 2.8 to do our developing for X-Plane. And so let's get straight into it. Here I am at uh, Blender.org. Um, of course, if you're going to use Blender 2.8, you're going to need to download it. And so here we are at uh, Blender.org. This is our first page. You can just click on this button here. It takes you here. It should automatically detect your operating system. If it doesn't, you can click on this drop down to change it. And then you'll just click that button, download Blender, and uh, install it. Follow the prompts. It's uh, fairly straightforward. The next thing we will need to download is the Xplane to Blender. Um, exporter right here and I'll leave a link in the description to this we're currently at beta 2 so when you get to this page here you'll just scroll all the way to the bottom and we want this IO explain to blender zip file you're gonna go ahead and download that file so with those two download with blender installed we're going to go ahead and open blender when you get this screen just click away from that and uh, here we are in Blender. First thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and install our um, X-Plane to Blender that we just downloaded. To do that we're going to come up top here to the edit and down to preferences and if it's not all already on add-ons you'll click on add-ons right here on the left and then we'll go up here and we're going to click on install and add-on. When you click on that it's going to bring up this and you're just going to navigate to where you downloaded that file. So here you can see I've got it. Make sure you get the correct one so it was at beta 2 and this here says beta 2. You would then hit install add-on. I've already installed it so I'm just going to hit cancel but you would hit install add-on. It should bring this screen back up and it will usually enter that file that you just did into the search so that you only see that. But if not, just hit the search and start to search for X-Plane and you'll see this add-on that we've added. Make sure that that checkbox has been checked and check that you've got the correct version for Blender 2.8. We're at version 4.0.0 currently. With all that, you could close this, but uh, just to make sure that it's saved, I believe it automatically saves, but just to make sure, you can come down here in the bottom left corner of that window, and you can say Save Preferences. So that way, every time you open Blender, you will have the uh, add-on enabled. Okay, so with that uh, add-on enabled, you'll have some new options over here on the right-hand side. You can see this option that says X-Plane. And we will end up using these, um, these options over here quite a lot. Now real quick, I'd like to just kind of clean up the scene. This is the default stuff that comes in here. I'm going to hit A on my keyboard and then Delete. And I'm just going to get rid of those um, because I like to start with a clean uh, empty slate here. Another thing I want to do is I'm going to come up here into this hierarchy view and you'll see we've got one collection. I'm going to add a second one and so to do that I'm going to right click say new. I'm going to then double click on that where it says collection 2 and I'm going to change the name. So I'm going to name this fuselage and this is going to be the fuselage of our aircraft. Now we will see that if we come down to oh, one of these tabs. There we go. Okay, so if we come down to this uh, tab with the little, I don't know, water drop and whatever that is, it says scene properties. You'll see we've got our X plane version. I like to stick with the newest version on that. And uh, Compile normal textures. We can leave that checked at the moment. I don't actually use those because I use Substance Painter, but uh, we'll leave that there for now. And here on our collections, 
other collections you see if I do this little drop down it shows two collections we've got a that collection up here and fuselage both of those exist up there so for fuselage we're gonna check this little box that says root collection and that means that this collection is uh, going to be exported as an X-Plane object. When we click this box right here, Export OBJs, it will export this fuselage collection and any objects that exist within it as one X-Plane object. So, first we want to give it a name though. Even though the collection up here has the name of fuselage and it says fuselage here, we can give it a name that we actually want X-Plane to see the object called. Now I, I just like to keep everything the same so I'm just going to name it fuselage again. Alright now it's the fuselage so it's going to be an aircraft part so we can leave that there. For textures we're gonna tell it what we are going to name our textures. So again I like to just stick with keeping things simple. So I'll do fuselage and then it will be a dot PNG. And then for my night, it will be fuselage underscore and then all capital L I T and then dot PNG. And then for normal fuselage underscore all capital N R M dot PNG. Now these lines then get written into the object file so that it knows what textures it's supposed to look for. All right, for debug, I'm going to uncheck debug if you're having issues. You can turn that back on and it should help kind of find those issues, but I'm going to turn it off because it adds a lot of extra things um, into your object that we don't need. Okay, so that is set up to export this collection. So let's real quick I'm on the fuselage collection out here in our uh, viewport. I'm just going to go shift A and we'll just throw in a cube real quick. So there we go. We've got a cube inside our fuselage collection. Now on that cube, I'm going to come over here and select this circle. And that's our uh, material properties tab. And here we're going to add a new material. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to name that material. Once again, just naming that material fuselage. And if you so desire, you can come down here to where it's base color and give it a different color to make things a little more obvious later on. Now with that done, we uh, should be set to export apart from, we need to come down here also on our materials tab we've got another um, x-plane option here so we want to draw objects with this material that means that if this cube has that blue material it uh, will be drawn and I can switch right here to show if we switch over to our viewport shading now you can see that that cube is that blue color so we want to draw it and we're going to also turn on normal metalness I feel that should actually be on by default, but we're going to leave that on um, or select that on because that's what allows the um, normal map that we're going to create give us all of the fun um, shading and bump and um, it's what cr makes it a, a PBR texture basically. So we want that on. Um, uh, blend glass is off, of course. It's not glass, so we don't want it to be that. And it's going to cast shadows. Um, everything else here can be left alone. It's not part of our cockpit, so we will not check that box down there. Um, override light level, we can get into that at another point, but uh, for using your lit textures and needing to be able to adjust the texture based on a data ref you would use this override light level option right there but for now I think we've got what we need we want it to draw the object and we want it to include that normal metalness line in our object code 
Okay, so now we have a cube that is ready to be exported. And uh, so before we do that though, let's save our file. And this is kind of another important step. When you save your file, we can, for the first time, we'll just come up here and go uh, save as. And here you wanna go to your X-Plane folder into your aircraft folder and into wherever you put your aircraft. Now in, in my X-Plane aircraft folder, I have a my aircraft folder. I feel that helps me stay more organized with the projects I work on. So I'll go into that and uh, let's just go into the sportsman just to, to do that. But So inside your aircraft and then inside your aircraft's objects folder. And that's where you want. You'll see I've got a blend file in my objects folder already. And that's where you would save your file. Um, you want to save your Blender file inside the aircraft you are working on inside its objects folder. And if you do that, then every time you hit um, export, it will place your exported objects inside your object folder so you don't need to move them from somewhere else. Okay, so go ahead and save your file to your aircraft objects folder. And uh, then when you're ready to um, export, you would come back up to this eyedropper tab and you would just hit this export objects button. I guess I should real quick, I will save this file so that we can do that just in case we have any issues. So back to aircraft, let's see. I think all of these have a blend file. They do, that's all right. We'll put it right here. Okay, so we're gonna save it in our aircraft objects folder and that way we will be able to um, see that file. So let me jump to where I saved it in here. Objects. Oh, I already have a. Oh, okay. So here's that test dot blend that I just saved. All right. Now, since I already have a fuselage one in there, I'm going to change this to fuselage test just so I don't mess up the file I already have going on in there um, because this is the name it's going to get exported as. So we've got it all set up. The object has a material. Now you need that one material and only one material per um, collection, not per object. You can't. So if we're in here and we um, add another cube right there, this will give us an error. And that, let me actually show you that real quick. If I hit export, you're going to see export produced errors or warnings. And I can tell you right now that it did that because I have two objects and they do not have the same material. That's another thing I should show real quick. If we come down here and we're going to change this to our text editor. Okay, and here in our text editor we're going to click on this little drop down here and explain to blender.log. It automatically puts it there for you. We're going to click on that and here you go. It gives you right up right there cube dot zero zero one has no material and it's as simple as that it tells you exactly what you did wrong so you come back here to this cube you go to its material tab you're gonna click this little drop down and say that should have the fuselage material okay so now if we go back up here and we hit our export objects again You'll see here in our log, there's no error, and we got no error pop-up. So if we go back to our objects folder, we should now have a fuselage underscore test dot obj. All right, now real quick, I'll just open this up um, with Notepad++ so you can see some of that information. That information that we added for our fuselage texture names those are all right there so those are the texture names that it's going to look for 
And on our material, we told it that we wanted the normal metalness, so it puts it right there. So we don't even have to come in here and edit any of that stuff. It's already been taken care of because we did it inside of Blender. All right, so I believe that's uh, that's basically all we're gonna cover for, for right now. Um, I like to uh, also kind of clean up this workspace. All of these um, tabs are, are quite helpful, but there's some you won't ever use. Sculpting is going to be a real waste of geometry. So um, unless you're really specific to sculpting and you know what you're doing and you're going to retopologize, just delete that tab. Um, shading here, we can delete that tab. Animation, unless you plan on using um, pose mode and all of that stuff, you can get rid of that. I, I prefer to use um, empties for my animation, so the animation tab is not helpful. Um, rendering, I rarely render anything in Blender. Compositing can go away and scripting can go away. And we're down to just a few simple tabs that make things um, just a lot cleaner up there. You can also, if you like, reorganize your items over here um, by grabbing the right hand little dots there and you can scoot things around and I guess one last thing I should mention is your units so we're on the little eyedropper thing here units um, I have found that units translate pretty correctly um, from blender to explain it's uh, you'll see that it was default to metric I actually am uh, in the United States so I'm more comfortable with Imperial um, so I will switch mine to Imperial. I'll keep that scale um, 1, so it's a, a direct uh, scale with a length of feet and all that. And, um, and then you can just go ahead and model to the correct dimensions that your um, information has given, and that will translate pretty correctly to um, explain. So anyway, I think that's it for this one. I hope that uh, helps to get you started and um, you should be able to now export your objects and uh, then the next step would be bringing them into Plane Maker, which um, is fairly simple and that's been covered in previous videos. So uh, there we go, happy developing.